we're getting down to the tail end of this project. We stopped in the previous lecture because we were hitting 15 minutes. So let's continue on with this and wrap this up. This is probably one of the trickiest solder joints that we're going to do. We have three, well we did three black wires here, now we're going to do three red wires here. We've got one coming from the pilot light that's just out of your view. We've got one coming from the bottom of the toggle switch, the on off switch, and then we've got another red wire that's going to jump her up to the the common terminal on the next push button set of contacts. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in some heat. Melt some solder. Move the heat around a little bit. Remember the heat has to be applied. So all of the metal, all four pieces, the solder lug and the three wires all have to be hot enough to actually melt the solder otherwise it won't wet to the surface and you won't get a good connection. Now we begin jumping from one common terminal on the push button to the next. So here we have two wires, one from the first common to the second common, then we have a, a wire which is not connected at the other end. So we're going to solder these two wires into this solder lug. And then we're going to repeat this process all the way up to the last push button. Okay, now you see we've got all of the black conductors jumper from the negative terminals for the LEDs. We picked up the black conductor from the pilot light into that. And this is going to go into the bottom part of the box. And this last black wire that gets soldered here with one 36 inches long black, this red one gets soldered here in the common for the push buttons with a black one, I mean, I'm sorry, a red one 36 inches long. So, and we have two blue wires per toggle switch integrating the toggle switch with the normally closed, normally open push buttons. And we need a red wire from the center terminal on the on off power switch to the bottom half of the box that goes to those bulkhead connectors that picks up 24 volts DC from the power supply. So the next thing we're ready to do is to add all the long wires. And we're going to do that in the next section. Thank you. Well, we've got all the internals done for the most part in the box. We still have the lower half of the box to do. We have two bulkhead connectors to put in there. Also, if we're going to use a terminal strip, we need to uh, double tape or hot melt glue or something to glue that terminal strip to the bottom of the bottom half of this enclosure. We're going to do all that in the next session. Thank you. So let's tin some wires. I'm going to dip it in the solder paste and then I'm going to hold it on the tip of the soldering pencil, melt some solder, let it wick into the wire, solder paste, heat, solder, see it wicks right in and you're tinning the wires. So I'm going to use multicolored conductor out of a cable simply because it eliminates the problem of identifying which wires connected to which point in the circuit. I could have used blue wires and green wires and then put wire markers on them and that might typically be what I would do. In this case I've got a cable here with more than enough conductors in it that there is a unique color combination for each of the connections that I need. I need a dozen connections for IO and then I need 24 volts DC and common. So there is a black in here 
and there's a red and then I can use the rest of these colors for inputs and outputs and I could leave them in the cable and just strip a length on each end and do it that way in this case I'll probably just pull the wires out of the cable and then use them the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the bulkhead connectors in the box and there's the two bulkhead connectors that we uh, pre-attach the red and black leads to now we want to install them into these two holes this third opening over here is for the flyout leads to leave the box to go to your the IO on your controller so I'm going to install those two bulkhead connectors and then come back and we're going to continue on with this project continuing on with this project uh, here's a length of um, multiple colored wires that I pulled out of a cable typically I tie uh, one end in a knot not a, really a knot but just to keep it them kind of captured and then I work from this end now we soldered or tinned the ends because this is not tinned stranded wire it's stranded wire but it's not pre-tinned and if you don't pre-tin the wires, either they come tinned off the spool or you have to tin them. If you don't, then it's going to take more heat when you start soldering these to your components. Now for the push buttons, those solder lugs can take a lot of heat. But on the toggle switches, they can't. So you want to make sure that you pre-tin all of the leads if they're not already tinned. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a little dab of solder paste on each of the center lugs of the toggle switches because remember that that's that deoxidation, the cleaning of the surfaces has to take place before the solder can wet the surface. So remember the rules in soldering are that all of the metal surfaces have to be hot enough to melt the solder. They also have to be clean. So the solder paste increases the speed once the heat is applied to cleaning, removing the oxidation, and wetting the surface with solder. So let's move back to the box and start soldering in these conductors one at a time. Let's do this. This is going to be the first of the uh, long lengths of wire that we connect inside the box that go out the fly the flying leads that come out of the box to hook to your IO we're going to start with the negative connection or the the negative side of the power supply that's jumpered to all of these LEDs and to the um, pilot light so you see we have two wires through that eyelet one of them is jumpered back to this negative terminal the other one is a 36 inch lead that's going to be part of the connection out to the I.O. So we'll just bring in some solder and heat and attach now remember that we tend most of these wires before we started this so the the long links that I'm using for flyout leads, those are stranded copper wire, but they're not tinned. So if I had not pretended, it would have taken a lot more heat to get my solder joint. Let's pause and do the next one. One thing that you may notice uh, when we tin those wires, it, it tends to put a little kind of a a little bulge at the end of the wire. You may have to cut those off with wire cutters before you can get them to go through the eyelet with a second or third wire in the same eyelet. Not a big deal. Just snip off the little uh, thickening on the end of the tinned wire and you're good to go. Okay, there we have the the black and the red or the plus 24 and minus 24 or zero 
uh, connected to 36 inch lead screw out of the box. Now we can either move to the outputs or the inputs. It really doesn't matter, but we're going to start on this end and work our way this way. That way, if we start here and go this way, then we're working over top of what we've already done. This way we'll start here, nothing in the way, then do these, these, and these, and these, and so forth. I made a mistake. I connected the two red wires to this terminal instead of this one. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I'm going to use a solder sucker now. And I'm going to heat up this soldering lug and suck the molten solder out of it. It did clean out the lug, so now I'm going to reattach the two red wires and then we'll come back and do some other stuff. I have a yellow with brown uh, mark conductor attached to the positive lead for this top push buttons LED. I'm going to solder this on here then I'll trim off the excess later. And it really doesn't matter what color that I use but it is important that I make a list as I go what color wire I've used for each connection. That way when I close up the box I don't have to keep opening and looking at the back of the lid to determine where those should leads, where those leads should actually go on my controller. Okay, I have uh, six conductors attached to the positive side of each LED on each push button. These six wires are going to go to the outputs on your controller. Now, it just so happened that there were five wires that were either white or white with a color dot on it and I added the yellow with the brown dot to complete the set. It would be ideal if they had all six been white with some color dots on them. I could have taken a white wire and dabbed blue dots on it but why waste the time. Now I'm going to attach the six input wires which go on the toggle switches in the same manner but I'm going to put a little dab of solder paste first on each of these solder lugs, then slip in the pre tinned wire before I heat. So I will come back and solder one for you in your view. Okay, notice I have a blue wire um, inserted into the center solder lug, the common on that toggle switch. And I did use a little solder paste, so I'm going to bring in the solder. And when I see it all nice and shiny, that tells me I got a good solder joint. I can always tug on it to verify it. So I'm going to do the other five and then come back. There's only one more wire that has to leave the lid area underneath the top of the box and that is the center lead on this toggle switch has to go into the bottom half of the box to the power connectors that go to the 24 volt DC adapter. Other than that, we have everything else connected. We've got a red and a black that carry plus 24 volts DC and common up to the I.O. module. And then for inputs, we've got a blue, green, brown, gray with brown, brown with green, and pink with brown. Those six are the six inputs. Now, these six inputs feed 24 volts DC up to the input terminals on a module. That 24 volts comes from these red wires that are daisy chained into the common connection on the push buttons, which come from this toggle switch that we have 24 volts DC connected to through the power connectors in the bottom half of the box. We also have a pilot light that is a witness of the presence of 24 volts DC right here going to everything. Now we also have a yellow with brown, white with yellow, white with pink, white with green, white with gray, and plain white connected to the plus terminals on the LEDs. Those will go to the output. So the output modules will feed 24 volts DC through the electronics of the output module. It'll come, the voltage will come down through these six wires to these six LEDs and then out the negative side this jumper to all of these push button lit switches and back to the power supply. So we have a black conductor going to the bottom of the box, the, the bottom half. We need a red one from here to go to the bottom and that will complete all of the conductors that we needed 
for the circuit. So I'm going to solder this red wire in and then come back and look again at the bottom side of the box with the bulkhead connectors. By the way, this is the solder sucker. If you've not seen one of these, you, you arm it with a plunger, then it has a button release. So when you push this button, you put this up against the molten solder, and when you push that button, it creates rapid suction and sucks the molten solder up inside of this, and then you can expel it when you recock it. There's always a little solder that comes out. I decided to stop right here. This video uh, discussion is reaching 15 minutes in length. I really don't like going over 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop. We've got almost all the wires soldered into the components. What we have left is we'll call it the final assembly. So I will come back in the next session and we'll do the final assembly and talk about identifying what wires are going to what connections in your controller. Thank you.